Welcome back to the Kentucky History Podcast. I'm your host, Jameson Cable, and we're going to pick up our conversation with Dr. Dyson about Carter County history. So after the Civil War, another common thing or common industry in eastern Kentucky is, is timber. Uh, any, any, a lot of timber going on in Carter County? Yeah, so especially there's, um, you know, probably one, one of the booms in the timber industry, I think in Kentucky generally, and in Carter County, you know, Carter County saw some of this too. Uh, you really see in, in the later 1800s, and then there's a resurgence in, uh, in the Depression era when timber was one of the few things that people actually had <laughs> something of value, you know, people actually had to sell. Um, but so in all of Hill, uh, the C and O railroad came in, I want to say right around 1880. Um, and that really um, helped to energize the timber industry, uh, there in the Western side of the County. Uh, you know, when you don't have to load it by cart and horse, when you can mm-hmm. load it up on a train, <laughs> when all you have to do is get it to the depot, you know, you don't have to come uh, around the mountains or well, yeah, not, you're not uh, driving. That, that, makes, riding. <laughs> that makes life a lot easier. Yeah. Um, and then, um, so, so timber is a significant industry, you know, and that's certainly not unique um, to Carter County. You know, this is a, this is a, a region wide uh, phenomenon. Uh, what is probably more specific in um, industry and really as the, as the timber industry starts to um, wane to some degree in the 1890s um, and then into the early 1900s, uh, what comes in to replace it in uh, in the western half of the county, in Olive Hill, is um, brick making. Oh, yeah. Um, specifically, Olive Hill has what they call fire clay, has naturally occurring fire clay, um, which is used to make bricks, um, the, bricks essentially that can handle exceptionally high temperatures. Yeah. Um, and so, um, you know, anyone who's had, you know, U.S. history will know a little bit about the history of companies like, you know, uh, like Andrew Carnegie's company, you know, U.S. Steel, things like this. You know, the steel and the American steel industry in, um, you know, in the late 1800s and the early 1900s is, a, is an absolute, you know, giant. It's, uh, you know, it is, uh, it and oil are the, uh, you know, they're the Godzilla and, uh, you know, Mothra or something of, <laughs> of uh, you know, American industry. And um, so what that means for a place like, you know, a, a small place like Olive Hill that's producing fire clay, it has fire clay and it's producing fire brick, is they're selling on these fire bricks to line steel furnaces. Um, okay, yeah. And so they're from about 1895 to certainly up until the end of World War II, um, they are doing a booming business in fire brick. In Olive Hill, um, I think there are three different fire brick factories in the western half of Carter County. Um, you know, at varying times in that time period. In fact, there's one still in operation. Um, it is, you know, it's uh, uh, it's you know, it's I think its heights are behind it. Let's put it that way. <laughs> um, but uh, because at one time brick making employed 1700 people in Carter County Man. And, and to put that to put that into uh, uh, you know into perspective Carter County has about 30,000 people today well okay, I don't yeah. think there's I don't think there's any single industry today probably that would employ 1700 people in Carter <laughs> yeah. County. but yeah. at its high brick making employed 1700 people wow. at a time when the in, you know the entire population of the county might have only been 18 or 20,000 people yeah, that is that is quite impressive. Um, now you said that was on the western part of the county, correct? Yes, yeah, so that's that's um, in and around Olive Hill. Um, I know there are there were two brick factories. One opened in 1895. Another opened in 1899 in Olive Hill. Um, there is also uh, the one that's still in uh, operation, I believe, is in a smaller community, it's still on the west side, called Grahn, G R A H N, which is a German name if I've ever heard one. Um, I don't know the origin of that particular place name, but it sounds very German. Yes. Um, so, in, so also, um, so coal, what about coal? I mean, Eastern Kentucky, the, that, when did, how much of that was in Carter County, I guess? So Carter County certainly did not um, see as much of that um, as some other areas. Um, 
interestingly, the state actually has, you know, they have all the, essentially all the mining permits that have ever been granted in a certain area. You can, you can just pull them up, see which ones are active and inactive. And I, um, some years ago, out of curiosity, I, I did that. Um, actually more clay mines, uh, more clay, more mining permits for clay mines than, than uh, coal mines. But there were a handful of coal mines um, and a handful of people who, uh, yeah, who, who made some money off coal mm -hmm. in Carter County. Mm -hmm. um, especially when you have the big coal boom in the, uh, I guess in the 19th, really beginning in the 1970s, um, there was some of that in Carter County. Um, but from what I understand, the coal in Carter County is not, the, the seams aren't as rich. The coal is not as high quality as say in the Southeast. Yeah. Um, you know, um, uh, Pike County, you know, sort, of the, sort of Pike full region. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, which is most well known for coal. Um, so there was some of that, but really, um, when you coal on an industrial scale in Carter County, I think was never, a, was never a massive thing. Yeah. Um, what I know of is more old timers digging into the hillside. Um, yeah, you know, of, of questionable legality. Um, and also, <laughs> of, uh, you know, you do what you got to do to live. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's not very safe either. That that's how it goes sometimes. Uh, well, that's interesting too, because I mean, a lot of people, if you said, "Hey, I'm from Carter County, Eastern Kentucky," they're gonna instantly be like, "Oh, you know, a lot of coal." But that's not necessarily not necessarily the case. Now, you said they mine clay. Now, would that, I guess, go right with the brick making? I mean, I yeah, don't I'm know. guessing that this is this is in conjunction with brick making. Yeah. Um, of course, these permits, you know, they don't tell you what they're what they're mining it for. Um, but, um, though some of those clay mines are also in the, uh, there's some that are more on the Eastern side. Um, I believe some of those mines, for instance, were in Denton and there's actually, there, interestingly, there's some place names that are connected to this. Um, like there's an area in Carter County that's called the clay camps, guys who are mining clay where they basically live, you know, kind of a little tent city. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, and you'll run into those names, uh, names like that in, in coal producing county where they'll have an area, you know, they'll call it the coal camps or something like that. Yeah. You know, and you go there, there's no tents there anymore. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, it was just known, um, you know, the name stuck, even if the industry didn't. A little bit of a different uh, twist to it there because, yeah, coal camps, very well known in, mm -hmm. you know, Pike Bull, Pike County, you know, Hazard, uh, those, those areas. Um, but, yeah, a, cl a clay What'd you call it? Yeah, in? Clay, 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 camps. Oh, clay, camp, clay camps. There you go. Yeah. If you ever, uh, if you ever come to Carter County and you ask somebody, uh, Hey, can you tell me where, uh, where the clay camps are? Uh, they, uh, if, if you're in the right area, they probably can tell you. <laughs> that's, that's, that's pretty interesting. Um, we talk about Carter County, talk about Grace, and we got to bring up Olive Hill and Beckham County. Mm -hmm. I and mean, of course you, you got to, um, Give us the rundown. I've talked about it before, but go ahead and give us the, the whole scenario there. Well, you know, I think probably what I could most usefully add is a little bit of uh, not so much the what, but perhaps the why. Um, yes. Because to this day, um, the, 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 the tension, the rivalry in Carter County tends to be east-west. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, in fact, even in the historical society, there was a uh, there was kind of a short-lived historical society in Carter County back in the '90s, um, and they would meet. Uh, I think they met twice a month, once in Grace and then once in Olive Hill, for fear of seeing being seen as playing favorites between oh. one side or the other. In fact, I remember um, some years ago in. Um, there was a, a football game between um, East Carter High School and West Carter High School. Um, and uh, I won't say which side, uh, but one side had t-shirts printed with a um, more or less vulgar sentiment um, about, <laughs> about, the, the opponent. about the other side. You know, one side generally thinking that the other, that the other half of the county is, you know, dumber less capable yeah etc and the other side thinking that uh that side is uh you know stuck up thinks they're better than them uh -huh. looks down their nose at them 
Um, and so I think that, you know, there's some, in, in the origins of Beckham County, there's some of that kind of Eastern and Western rivalry, mm -hmm. um, even at that time, um, where Oliveville sees itself as, you know, why should we be part of what Grayson is doing? Why should the county seat be all the way over there? Yeah. Um, on the eastern side of the county. Um, and yeah, and you know, Beckham County, you know, the, the, the you know, kind of a legal secession, essentially, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. is, of course, it eventually was struck down. So I guess you could say maybe not so legal. Um, <laughs> sure. Um, but, you know, it was one of those kind of bizarre episodes in history where one part of the county just kind of decides, you know, I don't, <laughs> We're I don't out. want to be part of this county anymore. <laughs> Um, and, um, yeah, and I think that's kind of illustrative of that East West, um, rivalry oh, right. that still seems to be alive and well. Well, yeah. And, and typically now, so there's East Carter high school and there's West Carter high school. Was that's there, correct. is it, so was there, or is there, like, was there ever Olive Hill independent, Grayson independent or yes. a consolidation so this, happened? Yeah. Consolidation happened in the mid sixties. Yeah. Um, there were, um, High schools, there was a high school in Grayson called Pritchard High School. There was high school, Olive Hill High School. Um, there was one in a small community called um, uh, uh, Hitchens, which is uh, not too far outside of Grayson. But yeah, so so those are a product of, of, um, of consolidation in the, yeah, in the 60s. Yeah. Um, how, far, how far apart is Grayson and Olive Hill? Olive Hill? Um, so, uh, you, they're both on US 60, um, and they're both also along uh, Interstate 64. Um, if you took down, so downtown Grace to downtown Olive Hill, I'd say would be, depends on how you drive. <laughs> yeah. um, but uh, let's say you're going the speed limit. Okay, which yeah, yeah. Not Everybody so many does. Local people <laughs> do, perhaps. Um, but uh, if you're doing the speed limit, I'd say 20 minutes, okay. 20 minutes downtown to downtown. Okay. So, but my thought is if you're thinking, 100 years ago or 120 years ago when Beckham County is formed, you're talking about a pretty, uh, pretty hefty trip, pretty long trip. I'd say it'd be, you know, it'd be an all day haul, um, yeah. you know, especially like horse and wagon. Um, yeah. and even if you're on horseback, it should be faster. You know, you meant not a, not a fun thing to do to go all the way to Grayson and back in one day. Yeah, that would be a, that'd, that'd be, be a, a long haul. Yep. That'd be a, tri a, a trip for sure. Um, so, but real quickly too, um, like just as a, this is a side note. So it was named Beckham County. Did you know it was almost named Goble County? I heard that. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and I, for, I guess they that. just, uh, they just figured it was too soon. I don't know. Maybe that I, I, I really don't know. It seemed like that would have been a logical uh, mm -hmm. thing to uh, name it because it, you know, Goble's assassination had happened you know, about four years prior. Um, but Beckham was the governor who was also, um, uh, the governor after Goble, and yeah, that, that Kentucky has a tendency to name counties after yeah. Revolutionary War soldiers and governors. Mm -hmm. um, and here and there, there's a few random names of like Rock Castle River, you know, Laurel County is another one, uh, Union County, you know, that, that are just kind of randomly named. Um, but uh, most most of them are named after Revolutionary War people, governors, and uh, some other political figure. Um, yeah, usually, yeah, soldiers and politicians. Yep. Um, and then, yeah, there's there are a few random ones here and there. Um, <laughs> here, Franklin, Franklin County, named for Benjamin Franklin, which you know we probably could put still put that in the category of uh, politicians. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so yeah, so that, that I always think it's such an interesting, uh, uh, interesting story. The the story, the once lived three months, I think, of Beckham County, Kentucky, that uh, mm -hmm. uh, came and went. Which there's actually a few other counties that were none of them ever were created but they were kind of drawn up and then mm -hmm. it just didn't happen uh, uh interesting there's a general for the confederate army i think his name was zoli coffer Zo Zo is that zoli coffer yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. there was a county created by the hmm. confederate state of kentucky in bowling green and it would have been around where wolf county is it'd been like right huh. in that area and uh, of course, they they created this county, which they had no <laughs> they didn't control it. Yeah. They didn't control it. They had no legal way to really do it. They just like, hey, this is a county. We're naming it after you, General. 
and then of course it went away because it was never mm -hmm. really accounted but uh, yeah that's news to me that's fascinating though it's pretty cool uh pretty cool little and you know you can find that on the um secretary of state's website there's a there's a few others that that were created or were in the process but never were uh, created that's that's one of the interesting ones because uh you know the confederate state of kentucky that was probably one that was probably one of the only acting uh things they probably did uh, as a government <laughs> in kentucky um, yeah. i found a rivalry or a feud as tends to be the case in many counties do you know anything about the underwood and holbrook feud i know a little bit about it so it's known Perfect. locally as the known locally as the underwood war okay um, and um that is, it's not, um, it's certainly not my area of expertise. Um, <laughs> well, the, but you can be as brief you know, as you need to be. <laughs> but it's, it's one of these, um, from, from my understanding of this, um, and, I'm, and I'm sure in Carter County, there are uh, people far more expert than me. Um, but uh, it's, it's one of these rivalries that essentially comes out of post-Civil War um, tensions, you know, yeah. basically post-Civil War guerrilla activity, um, there were, uh, if I recall correctly, there were also some, uh, you know, uh, charges of corruption and then, you know, extrajudicial murder that turns into, uh, you know, uh, maybe, well, you know, not far off from the scale of Hatfield and McCoy. Hatfield and McCoy is a little bit more famous, but in terms of the number of people killed, you know, you're not far off. Yeah. Um, I think, I can't remember if it was... Um, I can't remember which side it was. I want to say it was the, uh, I want to say it was the Underwood side, but they said something like every adult male in the Underwood family was killed. Oh, uh, wow. Now I'd, I'd have to double check my facts on that. It could have been the other side, but, uh, but I mean, it was a, it was, it was serious business. And if I recall, it also spilled over into Rowan County, um, to a certain degree. Uh -huh. um, yeah. Um, that's, uh, Probably a good podcast on its own, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah um, that, that would be, uh, it, it could be its own, I'm sure. Uh, yeah. A uh, historical true crime <laughs> podcast in the making right there. Um, so that happened in uh, the 1870s. That happened in the 1870s, I believe. Yeah, so um, right after the Civil War, essentially. Yeah. And those, those uh, wounds are still very fresh. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so, you know, we kind of, we kind of jumped around a little bit here. Um, what, you know, some important events, I guess, or happenings in like the 1900s, those things. I mean, we kind of already touched about a few things, but uh, some more things that have kind of happened in Carter County's history here in the last hundred years. Um, so a few things I'll mention, I may not be um, chronological with all these things, I'll, okay. I'll, but I'll mention them as they come to me. Um, one of them I'll mention is um, the um, country singer Tom T. Hall. He was born in Olive Hill. Um, cool. And in fact, the Olive Hill Welcome Center has quite a bit of his memorabilia. Um, and in my lifetime, even he's quite elderly, you know, yeah. uh, but he's come back to visit uh, a number of times, you know, play for big events. Or yeah. Like that. Still has some connection there, though he lives in Nashville. Um, one of the things that is uh, a less positive um, uh claim to fame that we have is that Carter County is the site of the first um, school shooting in the United States in uh, 1990, 1991 or 1992, I believe. Um, a guy came in and murdered a janitor, I think it was a janitor and a teacher, mm -hmm. uh, maybe a couple of people who were injured but who survived. Um, and I, I believe he's still alive and, you know, of course, is in, in prison. Uh, but I believe that shooter is still alive. Um, and, and I knew people, um, I actually worked at, this was at East Carter High School, but um, I, I worked at East Carter High School for a year and I worked with people who were there, um, who were there when that happened. That is, uh, that would have been, uh, been before Columbine, I guess. So, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Columbine was uh, 97, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so this was years, years before that. Um, not not one of the trophies you really want to be packing around, but you know. It, no, and and another uh, another uh, in in more recent history, um, even more recent history, uh, was the controversy over Kim Davis. The um, oh yeah, oh Brown yeah, she was County. in Carter County. Oh no, yeah, she ran. She was in Round County, but she was housed in the Carter County Detention Center, 
because oh. of the, you know, the uh, local bias, uh, essentially, mm -hmm. in Brown County. And so there were national politicians like Mike Huckabee um, who came to Carter County and rallied for her in, in Grayson. Yeah. It was, um, I was actually, I was in England at the time, but um, I had friends send me photos and videos and things like that. And it was a, it was an absolute circus. You know, all these, uh, you know, media people descending on Grayson. And it was, it was, uh, it, I, I think a spectacle is the yeah, best way yeah. to describe well, what that was. I was going to say, I bet that was a circus, but <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, let's see. I'm trying to think if there's anything um, uh, really momentous. Um, there, when I have uh, a bit more time to research them, there's some, uh, there's some interesting criminal cases um, in Carter County in the, uh, in the early 1900s, some from the late 1800s as well. Um, I'd, I'd have to do I'd have to do more research to speak intelligently about some of them, but there are some interesting cases that came about um, as well, which were uh, you know, solved and, and some found to be pretty heinous. Um, one one involved the murder of a young boy. Um, oh man! I think what, ten years old or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and a couple of people swung for it. Well, maybe I think in the 1900s, I think they didn't technically swing uh but they were uh, they were executed yeah so. yeah 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 that, which those are other stories we've been talking or we talked a few episodes about uh, earlier or i don't know it's been a while since we've had the episodes but the ashland tragedy is another you know uh, pretty uh, heinous crime which happened in boyd county of course uh, but yeah those those stories they exist and uh you know they're, they're pretty uh dark sometimes there's some dark ones there yeah, you know, people, one of the things that people say, um, and, and it, it's born out of more nostalgia than in fact is, oh, you know, things are so violent, things are so rough these days. Mm -hmm. um, but really, statistically, it's not true. Um, no. you're, you're, you're more likely to get, uh, you're actually more likely to be murdered in the 1950s um, than you are now. And, and um, someone, uh, someone <laughs> I was talking to someone <laughs> about this and they said, well, back in the 50s, you know, we didn't lock our doors. I said, <laughs> you should have. <laughs> that is, that the, is uh, the, the murder rates correct. were higher than, the, you know, um, rates of violent crime were generally higher, actually, yeah. in the yeah. in the 1950s. Um, so, uh, but that, uh, you know, that kind of interrupts people's sense of nostalgia. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, people want to think when they were kids, man, that it was just happening times. And, that, and I mean, it pretty much was when you're a kid, you don't have no worries. You can go worry about anything. So. Yeah. And I, I think, you know, the crime may have been different, uh, but I, I, uh, I, I don't there. think I would argue that it was safer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Different di different times, man. Different times. Uh, well, I, I'm going to throw out a few places here that are just like general um, names. You already brought up one of them and just, I guess, some other communities and stuff you can throw out. Um, so you said Grand or Grand? Grand. Is that Grand. Grand. Braun was one of them. Soldiers, is that a place in? Soldier, yeah. Soldier. Mm -hmm. uh, then Carter, there's a Carter. Yeah. Uh, Carter County. In, it's uh, usually on maps, you'll see it referred to as Carter. And uh, to to clarify that, um, to I think clear up the confusion with Carter County, uh, Car even though it appears on maps as Carter, it's typically referred to as Carter City. Okay. Um, in Carter County, even though... Um, I think city is a very generous term um, for uh, for what it is. Uh, it's, uh, you know, some houses and a, and a wide spot in the road and a furniture <laughs> store and a, yeah. and a gas station. Um, yeah. <laughs> but it does, it has quite a bit of history to it. In fact, there are some caves there in Carter City. Um, and for a short period of time in the late 1800s, there was a commercial um, tourist cave uh, operation there. In fact, I believe owned by the ancestors of the same people who own that single furniture store um, there in, uh, in Carter City. Very cool. Um, so, any other communities? Like, well, I, it's funny, Kentucky, you got all these small towns, but guess what? There's even smaller communities mm -hmm. close to yeah. these towns. Any others that um, right off that you think? I mean, just to deserve a mention, I guess. Yeah, um, uh, I think you had uh, you'd said something about Hitchens. There, there used to be a high school there in Hitchens, which um, uh, that the building is is interesting to see. Um, it uh, it 
housed, uh, it was built in the 30s by the, uh, by the WPA, uh, Works Progress Administration during the depression. Um, and uh, then it sat empty for some time, uh, but then was uh, repurposed and it is now uh, a Christian school, Carter Christian Academy. Um, okay. So it is, it is once again a school. Um, and um, it is a, it's, it's a nice building. It's very, uh, you got a nice uh, kind of the WPA style stone foundation and, um, and that kind of thing. Um, and uh, it actually, uh, in the flooding that happened back in, uh, what was it, March, I suppose? Yes. Um, that uh, their basement was full of water. Um, it's uh, uh, next to one of the tributaries, a little sandy, um, and uh, it drains a really large area there. And so when those, I think we got something like five, I think we got six inches of rain in two days or three days or something like that. Wow. And uh, yeah, they, they had a basement full of water. Fortunately, the, the, uh, most of the building was, was undamaged. So. Well, that's good. Uh, that's good. But, but yes, yeah, so, cause that's, uh, uh, yeah, not uh, 90, about, about 90 year old, uh, about a 90 year old school wow. there. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Uh, go ahead. Uh, I'm just trying to think of any other, um, really uh places places of import there's there's a lot that uh that i could mention but you know a lot of them man they're just uh, uh you know most of them don't even show up on a map they're <laughs> they're uh, literally you know a cluster of houses or you know never never have been incorporated yeah. you know places like um just an area on the map basically you know, like uh prater or um uh close to where i grew up it's a little place called pleasant valley I don't think it was ever incorporated or probably was ever seriously considered incorporation. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, and you got, um, Oh, uh, like, uh, another, uh, place now actually used to have a, a little, uh, very small railroad stop. Yeah. Out, that's, uh, more that's... in the Grayson area called Fultz. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that tends to be if there was ever a rail railroad station at some place, that that community would get some sort of name. Now, whether or not there's more than a house to do there, that's that's a different story. Um, yeah, you got to at least have a name to put on the sign for the station, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. that's exactly right. Now, one person, I, I look back real quick, and I, I, I jumped over this person. Do you know about Matthew Bacon Benjamin Purnell? Purnell. Yeah. He's known I, I as I know, I know I know about Matthew Sellers. I don't know about Matthew Brunel. This guy's name is King, or he was referred to as King Benjamin. Hmm. And he was uh, known for uh, he was a preacher, gathered a large following, known as the House of David. Hmm. And that's, well, that's that's completely new to me. Yeah. So that I mean that's uh, that that's one one thing that the old can take encyclopedia throughout there and I was like, oh, that guy seems pretty interesting, but maybe a podcast on his own. Yeah, I'll have to, uh, I'll have to do a little bit of looking in that. I, I'm not familiar with that. Uh, one thing that actually I could mention with regard to Gron, um, when you said Matthew, it reminded me, um, and I, because I think his middle name is not Bacon, but it also started with a B. I think his name was Matthew B. Sellers, one of the pioneers of aviation, who was from New York, but he had family in okay. Gron. Of all places, yeah. um, and in the uh, early 1900s, late 1800s, early 1900s, right around the time the Wright brothers were, were getting yeah. off the ground, yeah, Matthew B. Sellers was testing aircraft in in Carter County, Kentucky. Whoa! Um, uh, in fact, one of the the there's a small museum in Olive Hill uh, that has a number of his propellers, um, and uh, but the to tell you kind of the importance of Matthew Sellers, his all of his papers are in the Smithsonian. Whoa, um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and his um, several of his aircraft are in the Aviation Museum of Kentucky in Lexington. Wow, um, but he tested his aircraft in Gron. Um, wow, on this family property in Gron. Now, unfortunately, the house where he would have stayed and, and his workshop was in that same area. Um, it survived into the 1970s when it was um, a victim of arson uh, just by some uh, USDA grade 
a prime idiots. Um, <laughs> you know, you can you can put me on the record with that one. Um, <laughs> you know, it could have been a it could have been a historical site, and uh, yeah, somebody they decided pretty, to yeah. burn it down. Um, but uh, but yeah, so Matthew Sellers, even though he was a, a, a transplant, you know, he didn't. Um, yeah. He didn't. He didn't live in Carter. Carter County wasn't his home. It wasn't his birthplace. But he he tested aircraft there, and in fact, his was the first powered flight in Kentucky. Um, well, well, that's pretty notable. Um, and uh, there, I, I don't think it's a widely accepted theory, but there were some who um, who had argued that Sellers actually um, preceded the Wright brothers in flight. Yeah. Um, I. I think uh, I think it's probably wishful thinking. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, but but there have, there have been claims to that. But certainly Sellers. Uh, I mean, he got off the ground. In any case, he got off the ground very shortly after the Wright brothers, and was really if the Wright brothers hadn't um, uh, hadn't been as successful as they had, it probably would have been Grand Kentucky and not Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. And then uh, we could as the we could the first powered flight. Yeah, and we could have those cool license plates that say. First in flight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We just we just missed it. If uh, <laughs> if that? Matthew Sellers had just been a little bit quicker. In yeah. fact, I think um, there's there's been a book written about him by one of his descendants. Um, oh, cool. Uh, who uh, I, I I'm trying to remember her name. Um, she's she's not a historian, but you know she looked at his stuff in Smithsonian, and you know a lot of work, a lot of work yeah, went yeah. into that. Um, what is that book? Um, and if I recall, one of the things that slowed down his progress, um, again, I'd have to check myself on this. It's been some time since I've read about it, um, was that one of his um, attendants, one of his um, assistants was killed by a propeller. Oh, oh. Um, and that, um, you know, that was a... Uh, Setback. Yeah. And, and it was, I, I think it had a... You know quite an effect on them you know kind of I would uh, say, yeah the, you know question is this you know is what i'm doing worth somebody's somebody's Dying. life yeah yeah um and uh, uh but yeah so sellers is a you know he's again that there's a podcast all by itself he's a fascinating <laughs> yeah. a fascinating guy okay. um his as i said he was um uh, his his home was in new york um but i guess wherever he was based there in new york uh you know Gron was more of a secluded uh, place, Easier, a, yeah. a lot of elbow room to uh, <laughs> to do tests and this sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, Dr. Dyson, uh, thanks for coming on again. I, I, I've learned a lot about Carter County and Grayson and Olive Hill and all the stuff in between. Um, but before you go, I did want to ask you about the Kentucky Christian University because I was not familiar with it at all, and uh, that's where you work. So we'll, give us a little history about that, and then we'll, we'll uh, end for the night. So um, Kentucky Christian, um, first of all, it didn't always go by that name. Um, to give you a little bit of context, um, when uh, in the late 1800s and early 1900s, states started making um, uh, primary education uh, mandatory, you know, you at least had to go to grade school or, you know, up to eighth grade or something like that. What that meant, and that started happening about the 1870s and uh, was acquired in all 50 states by uh, by about the end of World War One. So when that happened, there were a whole bunch of new universities that were founded for the purpose of training teachers. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these places were called normal schools or normal institutes. Uh, in fact, a couple of my grandparents attended a, a normal school, a normal university. Um, you know, it doesn't mean normal as in, you know, regular, it means, <laughs> it means intended for training teachers. And so KCU was founded in 1919 um, as Christian Normal Institute, basically a Christian institution for teacher training. Um, you know, it actually wasn't originally meant for training pastors or anything like that. It was really meant for training teachers. Um, and the founder, who was a guy named J.W. Lusby, um, he was a, his, his career, uh, he was actually trained as a lawyer, but um, had also worked as a school superintendent. Um, he led the school up until uh, 1937. He had a heart attack and his son took over. Um, now, the fascinating thing about this was his son was all of 22 years old. Oh. When he became president um, of what at the time was Christian Normal Institute. Um, and as far as I'm aware, um, could be wrong, 
But as far as I'm aware, he's the youngest college president in American history. I would, um, I would say that's at 22. Pretty, uh, yeah. Um, and so he, um, and I think he was president until 1970, 1977, maybe 1975. Um, and then we've had a succession of, of uh, presidents, but we just had our centennial course in 2019. Um, and there are a couple of name changes over time. I changed to Kentucky Christian College um, in 1944, and then uh, Kentucky Christian University in 2004. Um, it is, um, I think we're the only private, um, private uh, university um, in uh, Northeastern Kentucky. Um, of course, you have ACTC there in actual, and then you have uh -huh. uh, Morehead State. Um, but as far as I'm aware, Northeastern Kentucky is the only uh, private institution fully accredited uh, by the so Southern Association of Colleges and Schools. Um, and uh, I think we have about um, uh, about 20 majors, um, okay. including uh, including history, um, history, nursing, biology, um, teaching, uh, uh, yeah, education, <laughs> uh, Bible and ministry, uh, things like that. Oh, well, that, that's pretty cool. That's pretty awesome. I, uh, one of those things I, I was not really aware of. So um, it's, it's, it's awesome. You know, these these little things you find um, or these uh, places you find around in Kentucky, man. Well, if you uh, get up to Carter County sometime, stop by. I'll give you a tour. All right. Well, that, that sounds like a good plan. Um, so I guess that that's going to wrap it up here for Carter County. Now, we might need to talk a bit more about Grayson, you know, Matthew Sellers. We got a lot of uh, good podcast ideas or episode ideas from, from this one podcast and, and no County deserves just one or two episodes. There's plenty of history we can, uh, we can talk about. So we definitely invite you back. Um, and, uh, uh, anything else you got? I think that's all for me for now. All right. Well, for everybody out there, thanks for listening and we'll see you next time.